Hey guys, it's Cassie here again. Long time no see. I know you guys have been waiting for this final design video for so, so many months. So the first thing I did was basically go on a lot of different websites like Dribbble and Behance and I basically just grabbed a whole bunch of different design inspirations to kind of start piecing together what kind of a style and look and aesthetic that I was going for. Once I had all those pieces in place, I kind of just started experimenting with the different types of colors, using the uh, eyedropper selector to like select different um, shades, both dark and light, um, just to start putting together a warm look that I was going for. Once I finalized the look and feel of the color palette I wanted to use, I started to put together the tabletop design system slash style guide. So in here, I have the brand and logo. This was the final logo that I came up with. It is essentially a table top <laughs> with the star in the center. Um, I made this primarily in Illustrator because I'm more comfortable um, creating logos and graphics in Illustrator. And then I just saved them with you know colored versions, a black and white version, and a white version, as well as ones that are vertically centered, horizontally centered, and more staggered, so it could be used in different instances. Um, the color palette um, ended up looking like this. So we have coral, baby blue, lavender, sweet mustard, soft brown in both shades, soft coral, cream, and dark brown. So as you can see from the images all here, this is kind of the feeling and um, color palette that I was going for. Uh, and then as for some of the art pieces, I decided to also make some patterns to just add into my UI design so that the screens wouldn't look so boring and flat and they would have some depth to it. So just using forks and spoons and chopsticks, I created the, these patterns in Illustrator. So there's a straight version, staggered, um, ones that are filled and unfilled as well. And then with the typography, I basically picked a font that was off of Google Fonts. So those fonts are all free to use. And I chose the font called Poppin. And this is just it in different sizes um, for mobile sizes. Um, and then Robot Roboto, I don't know how to pronounce it. Roboto is my body copy. Um, and just a disclaimer, this um, design system like layout that I grabbed is off of Figma from like another design system. So I am not taking um, ownership of the design of this design system. I kind of just took out the old stuff and I kind of pieced together my own stuff inside. And then I also looked at some, you know, photography. So what kind of style of photography do I want to put in my mock-ups? Because you want to have a specific feel and you want all your images to kind of look like they're from the same group of imagery. Um, but obviously in real life, that would not be the case. But since this is just a mock-up, I wanted it to all look cohesive. I also had have some icons here that I, that I took. Um, and then... The components pieces, so usually if you're creating like a very detailed um, design system, this component section will be split into a lot of different areas. But because I was only doing it quickly for like to make a, to make one set of mock-ups and then one set of prototypes so I kind of just like put everything on the same page here and these are all pieces that are um, like reusable components so say I wanted to edit um, an existing um, button for example if I change this to a different color then everything's gonna update on its own so that's the power of Figma and I was trying to utilize that um, so these are all just kind of like the reoccurring pieces that are found in my prototype. So now moving on to the mock-up screen. This is all of the mock-ups I have. They're laid out kind of similar to how the tabletop wireframes were laid out. I was kind of, I was trying to create the screens kind of one to one. And if you zoom in closer, here is a more detailed look on the style. So we have the loading page, the search screen, and um, everything kind of just moves across. Uh, but I'm not gonna talk about it in too much detail right now. I just wanted to show you guys an overview because let's just jump right into the prototype so I can walk you guys through the entire app.
All right, so we'll be using the Figma Mirror app. Just open that up. And I just select the screen I wanna start in. So this is the loading screen with the logo on it. It's what you'd see when you'd open the app. You have your search bar at the top, search by, you can choose cuisines, cravings, dietary restrictions, people, special events. It'll show you automatically, you know, what's five minutes away and then what's 15 minutes away for your convenience. And then at the bottom, we have our menu bar. So if I click into cuisine, you'll see all the options, Japanese, Chinese, Italian, so on and so forth, all with a really beautiful image to showcase the type of um, cuisine it is. So if I click into Japanese, you'll be able to see um, there's 80 results for Japanese. Uh, it's showing me what's five minutes away and some options that are a little bit further out. So if we want to go back, we just click go back. And now I'm going to search by location. You know, say I'm in a specific place and I want to look at the map. I can just click on the search bar, which pulls up the map. So I'm going to add a search. This is what's near me right now. I'm going to select on Tom's Bistro because I'm interested in this one. We know the restaurant is Tom's Bistro, American comfort food. Five, four out of five stars, it's a $3, $3 sign. And then we have these quick links at the top, which allows you to quick, quickly call Tom's Bistro, check out the menu, check out the stamps, stamp cards, and then go to the website. So if I click on menu, you can see it pops me directly to the menu so that I don't have to scroll to get there. If I click on stamps, it takes me directly to the stamp cards so that I can do it all very, very seamlessly. So it's telling me stamp card is available for this restaurant. You can collect all six stamps and receive a free appetizer. So I'm just gonna delete that for now. At the very top, we also have a add review button for easy access. But the first thing you see is of course the restaurant banner photo and the menu. So we have best sellers at the very top. It goes from number one to number 10, giving you an image as well as as the name of their best sellers categories they have appetizer entree dessert and drinks so I'm gonna click into actually I'm gonna show you guys everything first and then we have your photos down here um, and then reviews as well as a easy search um, so you can you know see what people thought about specific items you can see the reviews is laid out very uniquely so each individual who does a review, they can select multiple dishes to review so you know exactly which item they are talking about. Uh, so there's three reviews here. And you see all the reviews and in the very bottom we have the stamp card. So let's just go up, let's check out what they have on their menu. I'm gonna click on appetizers. It gives me this um, scroll up panel which gives me a detailed look at all the different appetizers they have. When we, when we see, ooh. when I see that there's a picture or a comment icon, that means there's been some, ooh, there's been some reviews done on it. So I'm gonna click on garlic prawns. And right here we can see there's images and reviews. So we start off with being able to see all the images that people have taken of that, of this specific dish. And when I click into reviews, I can see all the reviews done for this dish and what people said about it. So it's all based on that specific dish item. If I want to look at a different item, then I go back to this menu bar. So let's just close down the menu first. And say I just finished eating and I would like to make a review, then I would just click on add a review. You can select the dishes to review or just search for it. So in my case, I'm just gonna review that very first garlic prawn dish that I just um, opened up right there. So I'm going to click the add button. Once I click the add button, uh, you can see this panel pops up to give me an idea of which items I have selected and I want to review. Once I'm good with it, I just click next. And then here you can leave your review, click the amount of star ratings you wanna give, write your review, and then click upload images to upload whatever images you have on your phone. 
So now all the items are added. This is the picture. And you just hit publish. Ooh, publish. And there you go, your review is published. Now when you go back to the restaurant menu, you'll see your review on the garlic prawns and the yam fries is right here. And now to show you the other parts of the app, we go to the randomize tab. Once you click on randomize, you're on the randomizer. It asks you how many restaurants would you like to be shown to you? So I'm picking three restaurant results. I'm gonna select this price range, this distance, and a specific dietary restriction. Once I click randomize, I get the three results back. And I can go back and keep randomizing if I want. Um, and then next, the profile. Click on the profile, you can see I'm this Jennifer Lane here. You can see all the items I favorited before. You can see the reviews I've made in the past, as well as any stamp cards I'm currently collecting and have in my, in my account. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the whole app from beginning to end. Pretty straightforward. And yeah. Alright guys, so that is me showing you the entire mock-up and prototype that I did. There's already improvements here and there that I can already think of for it uh, because, you know, making an app, it's a continuous development thing. You keep testing it out, you keep finding better ways to make it more convenient for people. And there's definitely little things I can change here and there, but I think for the purposes of this entire series and just showing you guys my thought process and my design process, I think this is already in a really, really good place. And yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to share this with all of you guys. Please like this video and of course subscribe to my channel. The more you like it, the more people can find it. This was kind of the last piece for my design series. I don't know if I'll be putting any more out in the future. So thank you guys for always tuning in and I will see you guys next time in my next video. Bye!